when the use of these media conglomerates is cross-checked with ownership of the biggest names in prison privatization, it's starting to get a little fishy. The largest holder in Core Civic, formerly Corrections Corp of America, is Vanguard Group Incorporated. Vanguard is the number one largest holder in both Viacom and Time Warner. Vanguard is also the largest holder in the GEO Group, the second largest owner of private prisons in the US. The overlap in private prison slash mass media ownership is disturbing. Let's make this clear. The people who own the media are the same people who own private prisons. The exact same people. They make money from getting so-and-so from the hood to glorify the life they live. And they don't care about the impact it has on others because money is the motive. Then when the music influences others in criminal behavior, they make money from all the impressionable low-income people of color that are expected to go inside their private prisons. Hell. I gotta say something to the gangster rappers. I know a lot of y'all support me, y'all text me, y'all show me love, but I got to say something to y'all Negroes. And I ain't talking to all of you, but most of you. 12, 15, 16 albums of gangsterism, selling dope, sexually exploiting black women, going to jail, worshiping European materialism, got our kids strung out on cars. You Negroes need to get your act together. Facts. I'm tired of turning on the damn TV and I see Negroes worshiping chains, worshiping cars. Every rap song, the same shit. Money, women, kill somebody, go to jail, smoke some weed, worship materialism. Every album is the same. It might be a different rapper, different click, different city, different flow, different beat, but the content is the same. Allow me to reintroduce myself by name. Tabby Troll, baby T. Roll with me, troll the world, hit the road, baby. Huh? Clout team, me baby. Up, hit me up, IG, follow me, baby. Huh? Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Tabby Troll, baby T. Roll with me, troll the world, hit the road, baby. I went and got vaccinated. I had to, man. I'm trying to run these numbers up for booster bags, bro. I had to get vaccinated. Shit got me feeling better, too. I went and got vaccinated. What to do, YouTube? Tabby Trolley here, back with another video, man. And I had to start off with those footage, man. I feel like those are very important. Um, My mission to spread anti-jab awareness will never stop no matter how many videos i make which is why i put it in the beginning in the first place i am adamant about that i'm not getting the jab my kids not getting the jab i'm just not doing it if you do it it's your decision but i'm also here to give you um tangible information which will lead you to at least question why they was getting the jab in the first place i digress but today we talking about hip hop and prison population, man. I feel like, you know, shout out to Ayo Seiko, you know, rap trap. Um, but really, man, he's like, he's like the monopoly of, of the rap trap. When I say, as in, just exposing. I wouldn't say expose. Just you know, tell it, tell it like it is. Like he says it in plain terms. He's just trying to be overly smart, like Ti. Using all kind of big words, but I feel like you know. Me being an advocate of what he's doing, me being a member of AO Nation, I feel like I have my civic duty to put my part in telling the story and ultimately trying to fix or heal from the rap trap because I am the best rapper alive. I digress once again. So, what we have here is rappers going to jail. Now, I want y'all to think about this for a minute. When have you heard? I say the last five years. When have you ever heard on the radio a mostly, if not all the way, positive, none murder, none drug taking, none, even if it's cursing, like none agenda filling music that really uplifts you and brings you to a higher vibration when it comes to hip hop? RB is guilty too when I'm talking about hip hop. Because if you look at since 2016, man, we had what? We had the Migos, right? I'm talking about the last five years, what have we been subjugated to? We got the Migos, Lil Uzi Vert, Cardi B, Meg Stallion, 
the baby, Tory Lanes, Young Thug, Kanye West, Kevin Gates. Like even though Kevin Gates is my currently my favorite rapper, I, I mean, it's getting ridiculous, man. And it seems like people want to praise going to jail. It's just so crazy. Like it's so it's much deeper than just the white man putting drills on the street and locking us up, man, because we have a tendency to self-sabotage ourselves. Which is why I included that clip in the first video called the Nigga Factory. Please go. The link will be in the description. Please, please, please go to Speech's channel from Arrested Development and watch the Nigga Factory 1 and 2. I'm telling you right now. It coincides with everything that I'm about to talk about right now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. One of the reasons why I stopped doing hip hop up until just recently was because when we when when Get Like Me was the number one song uh, in America, I got a chance to travel internationally and I got to see the way that America was depicting black men. And for the most part, it was rap videos. And at that time, that's when reality TV shows had just started. And like we looked really bad. And I was a real big part of that. And I just couldn't do it no more. Like no matter how much money people paid me at that time, I just couldn't continue to send black people's images to It's important that we are educating our communities. This stuff that we're talking about, about the jab, we're gonna really get into that on September 4th. We need to know our rights. I'm all with my Ray. If you want it, go ahead and get it. But if you don't want it, should it be forced? Absolutely not. They out here talking about my body, my choice. If it's a woman, it's not even her body. She get to go kill a whole nother person, the baby that's in her body. But when it comes to us, if we're saying we don't want it or we're not comfortable with it, for them to say, hey, you have to get it. It's not FDA approved. It hasn't been researched. It hasn't been out long enough for us to know what the side effects are. We have the right to question. We're not the experiments. We're not the guinea pigs, right? I'm tired of the black community always being targeted with everything. Y'all already know how I feel about it. I don't know if I need to go into it, but abortion, AIDS, mass incarceration, COVID, hell, whatever you want to come up with, transgenderism for some reason, they always pointing fingers at the black community. And I've always asked, how in the world does something that start in China go all the way around the world and end up here in America and all of a sudden it's on us? The White House posted the other day that they just had a meeting with all past living Surgeon Generals about how, right, to get to communities of color and make sure that they are vaccinated. Y'all got to have a whole meeting just about us. And what I need my people to be educated on is when they say communities of color, they have literally separated themselves from anybody that has color in their skin. Now it's literally them against us. They've put us all in the box, whether it's black, Asian, Indian, whatever. If you're in color, it's us against them. Why is that? It's because maybe their numbers are on decline and it's a real agenda to depopulate. I don't know. We're just asking. That's what the Real Talk Tour is all about. We want to make sure that our people are informed, they're educated. If you are being forced, we want you to know what you can do. I wonder why you see the same stereotypes of black and brown people depicted in hip-hop music? What if I told you that some of the biggest music companies are in cahoots with private prison owners, and that the rap music we listen to is not only meant to entertain, but to verbally and visually support criminal behaviors that funnel disenfranchised people into these private prisons? Lastly, what if I told you I have proof? They're going to beef. They're going to find reasons to kill each other. They're going to find reasons to not like each other and it goes deeper accounts fake accounts youtube account instagram account twitter facebook accounts being ran by fbi agents they have verified accounts all kind of shit but they have like a reverse click form. So how a click form or you'll pay the click form and they'll give you 5,000 views and shit like that. These click forms go into every Quando Rondo live, Hood Rich Pablo live, uh, Lil Baby live, um, and go in that motherfucker and talk about shit to make these motherfuckers beef with each other. Another level of it is 
in order to get a deal, they have a list of requirements that you have to meet. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with the advertising and the marketing aimed directly at teenagers and even kids as young as nine years old. It's like the old English 40 ounce of music aimed directly at black and brown people, teaching behavior and worldview, justifying, promoting, and normalizing criminal behavior, which reaffirms the 400 year marketing campaign waged against black people since the beginning of slavery. And through stereotypes, it continues to separate brown and black people from the world by glorifying behaviors that can lead them to prison or competitively marginalized. This is the nigga factory. Um, low intelligence, um, some type of violence or a violent surrounding. Um, these are all the things that they have to check off to make sure that when they throw you into that pit, you're not gonna ask questions. When they get behind these fucking accounts and make fake beef between you and this artist, you're not gonna ask questions. You're gonna immediately just say, man, fuck that nigga. That nigga ain't real like me. Proof. In 2012, Core Civic, formerly known as Corrections Corporation of America, the biggest name in the private prison industry, contacted 48 states offering to buy their prisons. One requirement of eligibility for the deal was particularly strange. An assurance by the agency partner that the agency has sufficient inmate population to maintain a minimum 90% occupancy rate over the term of the contract. Wait, drag it? What? What kind of legal and ethical measures could be taken to ensure the maintenance of a 90% prison occupancy rate? Now let's work together to connect these things because I'm sure you're a smart person. It won't be long. Let's do the work. In 2012, a mere 232 media executives were responsible for the intake of 277 million Americans controlling all avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity and spark any trend. Time Warner, as the owner of Warner Brothers Records, can not only sign an artist, but since they're also owners of Entertainment Weekly, they can also put an artist on the cover by next week. You think you choose what you listen to, but do you? Both BET and MTV belong to Viacom. Okay, okay, now I know that's not news to some, but... When the use of these media conglomerates is cross-checked with ownership of the biggest names in prison privatization, it's starting to get a little fishy. The largest holder in Core Civic, formerly Corrections Corp of America, is Vanguard Group Incorporated. Vanguard is the number one largest holder in both Viacom and Time Warner. Vanguard is also the largest holder in the GEO Group, the second largest owner of private prisons in the US. The overlap in private prison slash mass media ownership is disturbing. Let's make this clear. The people who own the media are the same people who own private prisons. The exact same people. 